March 26, 1999. The Melissa worm is released online. The mass mailing macro virus lands its creator, David L. Smith, a 10-year jail sentence. In the same year, the Kosovo War comes to an end. Bill Gates becomes the wealthiest person on Earth. April 20th, 1999. The Columbine Massacre. Around the same time, in the UK, a series of nail bombs kill and injure dozens of civilians in related cases of domestic terror. June 1st, 1999, Napster debuts and quickly becomes surrounded in controversy for enabling free music downloads. Eleven days later, George W. Bush announces his plans to run for president. And four days after that, CNN runs a headline, Bin Laden feared to be planning terrorist attack. July 23, 1999, the all-Nippon Airways Flight 481D is hijacked mid-air by a mentally ill man named Yuji Nishizawa. Nishizawa, using a knife he smuggled on board, takes over the plane because he wants to fly it under the Rainbow Bridge in Tokyo. During the struggle, a man is killed. Seven days later, the White House holds what they call the Internet Y2K Roundtable. This PR maneuver is designed to assuage anxieties over the potentially devastating Y2K glitch in computer systems the world over. The 21st century was about to be born, and the 20th century was unsure how to cope. This is the world, the times, in which Grasshopper Manufacturers' The Silver Case was released in. It is to them it is addressed. Taken within this context of 1999, Suda51's debut as a video game auteur is incredibly timely and historic. It may not have released in the West until 2016 with plans for a 2017 PS4 release, but make no mistake, this game deserves to be mentioned among the handful of greatest artworks of Japanese gaming history. The Silver Case is one of the last great Japanese adventure games originally released on PSX. Its mechanics and playstyle haven't dated spectacularly well, but that's hardly a reason to miss out. Despite its somewhat antiquated gameplay, the Silver Case was ahead of its time. In 1999, adventure games were somewhat of a niche genre. What most gamers wanted were thrills and a rush of adrenaline, especially in the West. Not a wistful, meticulously studied, and often bizarre microcosm for modern life. It's probably for this reason that they waited so long to port the game for English-speaking audiences. But now, in 2016, soon to be 17, gamers as a category has expanded tremendously. We've evolved and developed not just in what we want from future games, but how we relate to older games as well. Of course, Suda51 would go on to make his name with games far crazier, louder, and more surreal than this one. In many ways, it's barely recognizable as a Suda51 production, if you're only going by outward appearances and stereotypes, that is. Underneath that appearance, though, is a thoughtful, nuanced, expansive game that just might be the single greatest send-off to the 20th century we could ever hope or ask for. The Silver Case is innovative even in how it's structured together. There are two storylines, Placebo and Transmitter, which can be played sequentially or one after the other. Goichi Suda personally wrote the latter while he's credited as a director for the entire game. This is a game about an alternate timeline, a pseudo-Suda reality, if you will. In its version of 99, Japan is something more of a police state. The game centers around the 24 wards area, a kind of government housing project slash new city created by the Japanese government to keep up with rising population numbers in 1980. By the 90s, the 24 wards have become heavily stratified. Its various governmental departments are now rife with corruption, backroom deals, and secrecy. Interestingly though, it isn't a wealth gap that sets the classes apart in the 24 wards, but rather an information gap. The wealthy have access to more information and technology to improve their lives, while the less well-off, who comprise the majority of people living in the wards, have only the news and other local media and tech to connect with society. Right off the bat, the Silver Case throws you, perhaps overwhelmingly, deep into its exposition, into a rifling off of department names, faction differences, and a Game of Thrones-sized cast of characters. You might want to take notes even in the earliest moments of the game if you aren't great at remembering stuff like this. 
But don't let that detract you from the silver case, because this game has a ton of heart and beauty and melancholy in store for players who can get through its rather novelistic setup and exposition. In a way, this structure dovetails nicely with the game's larger themes. Much like its characters, we have to struggle through the cold calculations of time, place, history, and setting to uncover the deeper meaning and inner sadness which we soon discover abounds at every turn. The Silver Case opens about 20 years after its titular murder investigation. It details the lives of the original case workers and the resurgence of the menace they famously neutralized in the late 70s, reincarnated as an idiomatic symbol for the late 20th century. The main characters, apart from the player character him or herself, are hard-boiled detective types, like Tetsu Kusabi, who the game juxtaposes with the younger, gentler, more tech-savvy police like Sumio Kodai. But it isn't just members of the heinous crimes unit you'll be meeting in the wards. In the placebo storyline, you play as freelance journalist Tokyo Morishima, who's hoping to cover the return of the Silver Case Killer for a much needed paycheck. To understand the events which take place in the game itself, of course, you'll have to learn about the original Silver Case, the investigation which made the careers of people like Tetsu and his unit the Heinous Crimes Division. By January 99, a bizarre series of events take place that eerily echo the original Kamui case. The threat of social decay is now everywhere in the wards. As a preventative measure, the Central Police Department Heinous Crimes Unit, which again made its name on catching Kamui, now transforms, adopting a new attitude towards what they deem transmittable heinous crimes. According to this new doctrine, crime is something like a virus that must be eradicated, obliterated. The special agents of the crime force become de facto surgeons hoping to calmly and quietly eliminate crime before it festers and manifests for the public to see. But there's nothing the HCU can really do to stop the spread of a new ideology within the 24 wards, a terrifying terrorist ideology centered around Kamui and his famous saying, kill the past. Thanks to the internet and its chat rooms, email servers, and so on, the officers of the HCU are fighting a losing battle in their attempts to stamp out Kamui's ideology once and for all. In the main storyline, you play as a new recruit into the HCU, Though it should be mentioned, you're a member of the more conventional Unit 2. Yes, the faction infighting has never gone away in the 24 wards. If anything, it's gotten worse, infecting even the HCU itself and splitting it into factions. Your unit is more boots on the ground, traditional police work style, whereas Unit 1 is more high tech and secretive. But regardless of your differences, you'll have to work together to uncover the truth of the Kamui case and do your best to prevent the spread of his bizarre manner of thinking into the public at large. If you're thinking this is a game about a secret police force, you're basically on the money. But again, the real topic of the Silver Case is the end of the millennium as much as it is crime. Fear of the future is greater in this game than fear of the antagonist Kamui, in fact. Even characters who have never heard the name Kamui are often lost and adrift in a new ocean of social unrest, enemy, and pain. Things are spiraling further and further out of control in the wards, and arresting or killing one serial killer is hardly going to stop that. Especially when, as we see, the crime that these civilians are so terrified of is it itself a product of the very government which keeps them safe. Because, as the game goes to great pains to demonstrate, these things are all necessary products of time and circumstance. Crime, punishment, and justice, they're all interlinked and interrelated. With so many people crammed into such a small living space and with so little economic and social options, it's obvious why social stratification and a deep-set malaise are omnipresent in the wards. By the end of the game, Silver Case deals with a number of complex subjects I don't want to spoil here, but to be broad, I'll say everything from memory to personal identity to social engineering are all on the horizon for those interested in seeing it through. Perhaps the most striking thing about this game is its cinematic window system, which reportedly Suda and his team came up with to ameliorate budget concerns early in development. Rather than giving the game a cheap or unfinished look, arguably the screens within screens motif speaks to the game's overall themes and subject matter better than a full screen experience would. If there's anything The Silver Case reminded me of, it would be HBO's The Wire, because both show the inner life and realities of a social structure from various vantage points, 
Both are interested in giving a panoptic view into the heart and soul of modern life, society, and the city. Where Silvercase differs from The Wire is also where it feels the most relevant. As a game about the turn of the century, the internet, and information, The Silver Case feels borderline prophetic in many ways. Today, as in 1999, online spaces are the last bastion for many who have had their lives turned upside down by drastic, sudden shifts in global capital systems. And also like 99, these spaces are not always free from violent, destructive, petty, myopic assholes. Assholes whose numbers increase as those shifts become more commonplace. So at its core, The Silver Case is a case study on how people interact, how society fits together and functions, all in the modern age. I'll wrap up here to avoid spoilers. So I'll just say this. If adventure games are your thing, you like a little bit of a surrealism, a little bit of artsy fartsy stuff, and you want to play a real piece of art, I just can't recommend this game enough. I give it 15 out of 14 pizza slices.